Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to my channel, Dale Chanel's 48's World. When we do reviews, we do reviews, we do reviews, especially reviews on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. We're going to be going over the one that aired last week. I know I'm late, but better late than never in my Riley's voice, okay? Um, this season 13, episode 5, don't come for me unless I invite you, okay? And I'm just going to say... I zoomed in on Candy sparing the rod on her oldest daughter, Riley Burris. Okay? I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Candy, if you were looking to show us how an, a child that is privileged acts out, girl, you nailed it on the head. Because that woman right now. She got some unhidden feelings that she definitely needs to take out and talk out with you, Candy. But she is just showing up and showing out on your behalf, honey. Last time she said that you were not academically smart. You were street smart. She will give that to you. Now she's trying to say you taught her not to clean. She learned not to clean from watching you. Girl, what is going on with Miss Riley Burris? She is having some baggage being taken with her that she needs to leave with you. I say counseling. Counseling can do the body good and the mind and the soul. But, ooh, child, this episode was about Riley and Ace being a bigger person and better person than his older sister, Riley. They tried to teach this child how to clean a bathroom, all right? And Candy just pretty much said, my mama give it to you. You don't have to handle that. I'm like, what? How are you going to give your child, your firstborn, to your mama? Did she not raise you, Candy? Did she not raise you to learn how to cook, clean, and be self-sufficient? I think she did. Did a wonderful job, girl. Now Mama Joyce got a take care of baby blaze and ace well ace already got it going on because mama joyce must have stepped in early on with this one okay because ace know how to clean he probably know how to cook he probably know how to get his cereal and his milk together okay child but that riley burst now she academically smart but she is kind of challenged on some other things can i think you just spelled the rod on her you spelled the rod until you unlit uh, uh, Girl, girl, like I said, if you want to show us a privileged black child, you did that with Riley, girl. You did that because she don't know nothing about manual labor. She don't know nothing about it. She thinks she's going to have servants here and there. And if she can afford to do it, then go ahead, honey. But don't deprive the child of learning how to be self-sufficient and knowing how to cook, clean, and care for herself, Okay. That's all I'm saying, Candy. We get on into the scene, and we got Candy and the mama, Mama Joyce and Riley and uh, Ace sitting around, you know, talking about, ooh, Riley going off to college. Ooh, she's grown. Ooh, she this and she that. And I was like, Riley don't even know how to clean a refrigerator, let alone her bathroom. What's going on with that? She even said in the scenes, What's that? When Mama Joyce and Cam trying to show her a bucket, a sponge, a mop, any cleaning supplies they can get their hands on, wear some gloves. Riley just was oblivious to that. Like, it just went right over her head. Like, uh-uh. What are y'all giving me that? What's that for? What is that? And they were like, girl. It was like, it was like Mama Joyce wanted to go upside her head. I was like, oh, Mama Joyce, take her to the street. Take her to the street. Mama Joyce, oh, what did y'all, why did y'all spell the rod on Riley? And I guess Mom just thought Candy was doing her job. She did her job with Candy. She know let her learn how to cook, clean, and be self sufficient. Okay, take care of your own house household. All right, be the one that bring up the bacon, serve it in the pan. Shit, you are the whole house. Okay, some of what you gonna bring to the table? No, I am the whole house. What you got going on? That's Miss Candy Bird. Miss Mrs. Candy Birds. Okay, well Miss Candy Birds talker, talk talker. Okay, whatever. 
But anyway, it was just a shameful period. And I'm like, Tanya, that's what you wanted to show us, girl. You hit the nail on the head because Riley got book smart. But she ain't got no other kind of smarts when it comes to being self-sufficient. I mean, if you weren't paying for her schools, clothes, shelter, books, uh, meals, uh, rent, <laughs> the girl couldn't survive because everything was just given to her on a silver platter. And she just don't know what's up and what's down when it comes to taking care of herself financially, okay? So I'm like, girl, girl, Candy, where did we go wrong? Okay, but, you know, maybe Riley's kind of upset because you were always on the road. You were always trying to make that money for the family so she didn't have, but you didn't have a bad life yourself, Candy. Mama Joyce had to work two or three jobs, from what I understand. You get your career to be taken off with um, the, whatever y'all was, the escape group or whatnot. But we ain't even going to go into that. Well, that's not necessarily to be talking about. But I'm like, girl, we have got to get Riley on this choo-choo train about learning how to cook, clean, and be self-sufficient, okay? Because right now, she's living off you, she's living off your money, and she don't know nothing about being a pauper, okay? Maybe we just need to let her be a pauper and let her know how things are really done in the real world and just not she being privileged and you're just, you know, sheltering her from all this stuff. It's not a good look, not a good look at all, Candy, but we're going to move on to Cynthia and Mike. Child, they had a little time out there on Lake Bailey and it was nice and stuff. And then Mike heard something in them little woods and whatnot. He like, what's going on? I hope that ain't no snake. And since said, oh, no, we got to take uh, Mal and me. We, we took care of that around the house and stuff. He said, I understand you did that around the house, honey. But did you come down here with the lime? Did you come down here with the snake away stuff? He's like, oh, shit, no, we did. And I was like, okay. See, Mike, don't leave Cynthia. Please don't leave her. Please don't leave her, okay? You married her. We know y'all married. We hopefully y'all, you know, still doing y'all thing, but uh, Mike, she needs your other half of your brain. That's all I'm saying. So then we're going to move on from there. We got Cynthia and Toya and Kenya. They're calling themselves going to a little lingerie, a uh, little uh, soiree boutique, and they're trying on all this lingerie. Kenya's modeling. We got Cynthia modeling. And, you know, Toya, I, I can't remember if she was modeling lingerie or not. But it seems like Cynthia's a little jealous of the relationship that is forming between Toya and Kenya. Okay, she's like, what's going on with this? Can't, Kenya can't come out without Toya. Toya can't come out without Kenya. What is this? Okay, like she kind of getting jealous over there. I'm like, slow your roll, girl. You still got mail. You still got your mama. Um... You still got Mike. Okay, girl. Slow your roll. Can you try to get another storyline here? Okay. But like I said, it seemed like Cynthia was kind of salty. And I wanted to know. I hope they bought that under on uh, the, the lingerie they were wearing. Because I'm like, that was next to their derriere. You know what I'm saying? Like, that is so nasty. I hope they did buy it. And I just tried it on and put it back for somebody else to come in and set straight on out the door with it. Because that was pretty nasty. Nasty, nasty, nasty. nasty. But then we go on to Portia. We got Miss Portia, Miss Diane, and Miss Lauren down there sitting on the floor having a little tea time or sandwich time, croissant time, whatever you want to say. It. And Miss Diane was being a little salty, a little nasty over there talking about her ex-husband who is now deceased. I uh, think uh, the man died when Portia was 10. Or was it 10? Yeah, no, I'm sorry. When Lauren was 10 and Portia... Uh, found out how to be shared between both parents at the age of three, because I guess that's when Diane them got a divorce. But she was sitting up there shading Lauren's mama, calling her an itch and everything, because she said, she told Lauren, your mama would call me when she was having you. Come on, she here, she here. And she had to, like, reflect, like, okay, wait a minute. I, I'm okay with her, and I'm okay with her being with my ex-husband, but I'm not okay with her as far as she's, you know, calling me and telling me all these things about her new family with my ex-husband. Now, nah, what kind of itch is that? That's what she saying Lord, about your mama and you took it in stride. I've been all over Miss Diane's, but you didn't call my mom no itch, okay? Do I call you an itch? No, I don't. But see, that's just me. That's just me all day, every day. But Miss Diane knows she was wrong by saying that. You too old to be floating up here having mishaps 
with the mouth, okay? So you need to be always on point and not, you know, uh, saying anything so disrespectful to what you did. But, you know, they were having a little talk. Portia's writing a book about her life and growing up and all this kind of stuff. And I guess getting into the limelight of Hollywood and celebrity ship and you know, her failed marriages, failed relationships, and she thinks it all stemmed from her mother's failed relationship with her dad. So I'm like, okay, well, I really want to see it for her. Some people last in marriages, some people don't last in marriages. Ain't no sense of hovering all over it. But if you want to write a book, you know, and have us go partake and evaluate it and come back and make reviews on it, so be it, let it be done, okay? So we move on from that situation because we're really one then to uh, talk about. She's just writing a book and a tell-all book, but I'm sure a lot of things that we would probably want to know won't be in there. But anyway, we got Cynthia again. We got Mr. Mike. They think they're going to a surprise dinner party where they're going to meet Joe Biden, okay? Because that was the lie that Kenya and Candy done fed to the girl when it really was a party uh for her her engagement party that kenya came up with the plot and the ideal and stuff and she just uh put candy in the mix of hosting it because she couldn't she couldn't do none of that you know she was too big of a person to be doing all the me the, the small mini work so but she had an event planner she had told her the scheme of things of how she wanted it to go how she wanted it to flow she wanted to send she wanted cynthia to enter the room and just cry i'm like where they do that at now can you where they do that at and then you're working on this pretty storyline between you and miss toria right there like y'all may be having a little uh twist or twist in the bedroom scenes or you know i'm like Girl, can you try to come up with a storyline that she's bisexual now, allegedly? But I'm like, okay, okay, can you want to get this storyline? I'm down with you. I'm down with you. I'm trying to see where you're going with it. It's interesting because you don't want us to talk about your failed marriage with Mark, okay? So I, I'm like, okay, okay. We're going to let that one go this season. We're going to uh, stir up some trouble or give us some impressions that you may be speaking the bi language or bisexual language now. Like you like women and you like men. Okay, but you don't like poetry. <laughs> I'm like, okay, 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 honey. I'm okay with that. We're still trying to figure it out. But we got Cynthia. She lost his hell. And we got Mike. It's lost his hell. Because they still trying to figure out why they here. Now, you got C. Chill up there. You got Winter Wonderland. You got people saying, surprise. You don't see no job, Joe Biden. You don't see no Kamala Harris. You don't see no security guards. Okay? No Secret Service men. No men in all black. You know what I'm saying? With the little... <laughs> microphones coming out their ears, okay? Girl, teleport yourself back to Earth. If you didn't know, now you know. It was a surprise engagement party for you and Mike, okay? Remember back when, when Kenya had spoiled the surprise and everybody in social media <coughs> and probably in the private sector and y'all little circle. I was just like, that's just pure trifling. How did Kenya gonna come up there and tell you that Mike was gonna propose to you and you not have any inkling to the fact? I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> so Kenya came up with this brilliant idea, which hey, I ain't got no no shame in her game. If she wants to sit there and say, Yes, I was sorry, or I am sorry for jumping the broom of the gun, basically saying that your maybe boyfriend is going to propose to you. Yeah, I was trying to make it all about me and I wanted to take over the situation. I'm sorry, girl. That's why I'm throwing you this party. But honey, me Portia came in there late. <laughs> Fashionably late to an event that she was actually paying for, okay? And Portia didn't just come in there and sit her butt down. Uh -uh, Portia came hugging everybody, kissing on everybody, you know, like the fake kiss from the cheek to the cheek that, um, we call that French type of thing. And while I said, I mean, Kenya was up there giving her toast to CE, I mean, uh, Mike and Cynthia Bailey <laughs> on stage. Honey, um, 
porch was sitting around there saying, hey, y'all, how y'all doing? Okay, okay, okay. No, Joe Biden, though. No. Okay. I see what y'all doing. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Everybody looks so pretty. And Kenny was sitting up there talking and trying to listen at the same time. And she was like, this helper did come up in here. And, and it spoiled my surprise. Well, not spoiled it, but spoiled it by being late. And then she's going to go have conversations when I'm trying to get my own speech. Oh, we won't have this. Heads were going to be rolling when I get off this stage. It's gonna, The head's going to be rolling. And my first prey will be uh, Miss uh, Portia Williams. Okay? No having no man's self is what she probably wanted to say, you know. But that's just how King roll. But child, the piece de resistance for this particular episode was Candy Burris and Riley Burris or Candy Burris Tucker and Miss Riley Burris trying to get some stuff out of her chest. I'm like, what's wrong with Riley? Okay. Yes, her mama one day she was out there trying to secure the check. Still out there trying to secure the check because even Candy said herself, which I'm kind of ashamed of for Candy because she shouldn't have left Riley there trying to help raise baby Ace because Ace was, you know, he was breaking down, child. He was having a moment. He was having a meltdown. Talking about Riley need me. I need to go with Riley because <laughs> Riley was basically there to take care of her little brother and he had got more attached to her than his own mama. But see, mama was out there trying to secure the bag while Riley was up there needing her mom with her as she was growing up doing these times and she had mama Joyce. Then she had a little baby brother but right, I mean, Ace at her kneecaps, okay? Like, uh, you need to be reading to me. You need to be feeding me. You need to be doing all these things that my mother cannot do at this time. And then she got my daddy trailing behind her, too. So, can you help your little brother out and be there for me? So, she pretty much helped raise Mr. Ace from what Candy had told us on this episode. And I'm like, okay. Okay, at least you could admit your faults, Candy. I ain't got nothing wrong with it. You trying to secure the bag, honey, and Riley trying to take care of her home. <laughs> or y'all home, I should say. Because she sure was feeling tired at the time, okay? But she was down there putting seeds down, building roots with her baby brother. Yes, she was, okay? She was being the mother that you weren't trying to be at the time to her when she grew up. So I think, I think Riley has some issues that need to be sought out with some prayer and counseling, okay? Because she really, I mean, the first, uh, two scenes before that, can she was telling you you were street smart, but you weren't academically smart. And it was, she kind of was talking the truth because when you had said that, uh, you could get somebody online to take your classes for you. I said, girl, or you want to get into a scandal like uh, that full house woman did and this other lady, I can't remember her name, but they did serve a little jail time before them were two or three months. That's what they did, girl, so I don't know. And Riley was like, girl, no, and I am a former graduate of college, you know, post-secondary education, and you can flunk online, really, because who's going to sit up there and be doing your work for you? And then you have to keep them in secret that they did your work and you didn't do it by yourself. Rob said, I ain't got time for that. I might well just do the time. I might well just go on and do the whole work myself, okay? Because this is how it is now. You're going to do some classes online. You're going to do some classes in and uh, face to face. And Candy like, oh, uh, I'm like, uh, now I can see what she's talking about, Candy. So sometimes I think you misspeak before you really understand what you're saying and speaking on because yes you can fail and uh lo online learning distance taking of classes ain't no joke okay it ain't no joke you learn more online than you do in person okay that's just for one person that know what riley's talking about okay so but that's all i got y'all for this episode Okay, it was, I tell you, it was all about Candy Riley again, Candy and Riley. I'm like, okay, Candy, thank you for letting us see, you know, how y'all get down. You didn't spell the rod with Riley because you didn't have time. Mama Joyce pretty much raised Riley for you. You just had all the financial tools to put in place, okay? You trying to make that money for your family security legacy. I ain't got nothing to say about that. Do you do that? But see, how they say the chickens come home to roost, and I don't know, honey. I don't know. I wouldn't put Riley on TV no more. I sure would. Not unless she gonna say, no, nah, Riley ain't coming for her mama no more. We need you to put nip that in the bud can. She don't need to be coming out to you like that. You know, putting a target on your back like you ain't no good mama. Cause that would have given 
Like you just abandoned her and she had to raise her own self along with mom and daughter stuff and stuff of that nature. And you just out there doing your own thing. And she's being very resentful. She's feeling feeling very resentful of that. So I need to get that together because y'all are beautiful family family. And, you know, we already know she don't like Todd, even though you try to tell us she ain't got no problem with Todd, but we, we, we know better. We know better, Ken. We know better, girl. But that's all I had for season 13, episode 5. Don't come for me unless I invite you type of situation. It was cute. It was cute. Giving me that, you know. Giving me whatever it was trying to give me, okay? They trying to say the show. They trying to make it do what it do. But like I said, it's half black luster. You know, because the main player is gone, but she wasn't giving us too much anyway. But, you know, blessings upon her. Maybe new doors open up for Miss Nene Leaks, okay? But this is all I had, y'all. Y'all get down, share this video, like this video, and I will see y'all next time, okay? Be blessed. Bye-bye.